Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As some of you know, I am a steadfast Minnesota Twins baseball fan. I have been ever since I was a kid. Now this may seem like a rather foolish time to talk about baseball right here in the middle of winter. It's about halfway between the uh, conclusion of the last World Series and the beginning of 2024 spring training. But here I am talking about baseball. It might seem like football's more appropriate with the Vikings-Packers game going on tonight or basketball with the Timberwolves surprising us all with their wonderful season and the Minnesota Wild having a, a bit of a, a good streak here too. And um, of course, the, all the high school sports that are going on this winter. But I'm talking baseball. There's things to watch during the off season in baseball, like what free agents are the Twins going to sign to bolster their pitching staff? Or what trades are they going to make so that their team is better in this coming year? Another question is, how about these, these players that were injured at the end of the season last year? How is their rehab going? Are they recovering so they're going to be 100%? Are you getting bored yet with this baseball talk? I'll, I'll get to something else in a little bit. So and the question for me is, how is my namesake, Byron Buxton, going to do in this uh, next season? Will he be healthy enough so that his wonderful talents can finally be on display through an entire season. Yes, there are a lot of open-ended questions when looking forward to the 2024 season. But even in the midst of those questions, I always envision a scenario in which the twins have a great season. Usually that scenario begins with the word if, right? if these people stay healthy, or if this player comes through. Anyway, I have some scenario where they might get to the World Series. After all, I have strong memories of those two amazing years, 1987 and 1991, where against all odds, the Twins not only made it to the World Series, but they won the World Series. Anything is possible. Live with expectancy, right? except for the Vikings, <laughs> or so it would seem. Now, Norm, I am a Vikings fan, uh, but this is kind of the way it is for us. You get your hopes up, and then you get let down, and then you start to believe again. Like, for example, if they beat the Packers tonight, our hopes will get up a little bit, right? They still have a chance to make the playoffs, and once they make the playoffs, who knows? Anything can happen. But we are Vikings fans. We have learned. I've been a Vikings fan since the 1960s as well. And along with many people in the 60s and 70s, I followed these great Vikings teams. We had high expectations, made it to the Super Bowl. Yes! Loss number one. Lost number two, you know, you know what, I'm, what I'm doing here. The Vikings have had many great players, many wonderful teams over the years, but it just seems like something always goes wrong. We Vikings fans, well, I guess it's a character builder, right? We have learned to deal with disappointment. All right, there is a sermon in here somewhere, right? I'm kind of taking an end run, as it were, to the gospel text for today. Forty days after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph follow the Jewish laws and uh, bring baby Jesus to the temple to be presented to the Lord. We are told that two devout senior citizens were there that day, Simeon and Anna, and they have an insight that kind of special insight that the Holy Spirit gave them to see that in this little child, God is doing something very, very special. Luke tells us in our gospel reading that the Holy Spirit rested on Simeon, and this Spirit had revealed 
to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Simeon claimed this special revelation. He was living with expectancy that God, who had been faithful to his promises in the past, would fulfill his promise to Simeon. Now, we have to remember that the Jewish people had been awaiting a Messiah for centuries. They had been looking for that anointed one, that special person in the line of David who would come to this earth and be that promised Messiah. Simeon had been holding on to the promise that after all these years of waiting, he would personally see the Messiah. And this Messiah would not be just for the Jews, but also a light of revelation to the Gentiles, the non-Jews as well. In his song of praise, Simeon says that he can now depart in peace, a peace that comes from the assurance that everyone, Jews and Gentiles alike, will benefit from the redemption that God is bringing through this young child. Simeon's joy and peace build on the message of the angels to the shepherds on that Christmas night. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace. And on earth peace among those whom he favors. The elderly widow Anna, upon seeing baby Jesus, joins Simeon in praising God. She too has been living in expectancy, spending her days in the temple, fasting and praying as she lived in expectancy of what God was about to do. This evening, people from all around the world will gather to celebrate the coming of a new year. As midnight comes from east to west, people will hug each other and yell, Happy New Year! Why all this celebrating for just this, this turning over of the calendar? What's going on here? I believe it speaks of the need of humans to live with expectancy, to begin with a fresh start, a clean slate. It's time to imagine that maybe we can do better in the year ahead. Maybe the world can be better in the year ahead. People establish New Year's resolutions intent on improving their lives and the lives of others as the weeks and the months of the new year progress. Well, we know that the world's problems won't be solved tomorrow on January 1st. Wars will continue Hatred will be expressed in all its ugly ways. Millions of people will still lack life's basic necessities. We will disappoint others as well as ourselves. But we have good news today. The Savior is here. God has entered our world, and because of that, we can live each day in the expectancy that God is at work bringing redemption in broken human situations. I'm really amazed as I look at our gospel text for today that Simeon and Anna were given the insight to see God at work when they looked into the face of baby Jesus held by his peasant mother. Somehow through prayer in the presence of God's Spirit, they could see beyond all the outward circumstances and recognize God's action in human history right there in front of them at that very moment. You and I can live with that same expectancy. We don't have to focus on the huge things. Rather, we can pray that God would give us the vision of Simeon and Anna to see God at work in the little everyday ways. We can see God's hand as another person reaches out to help us. We can hear God's voice as people share words of encouragement with each other. We see God's redemption taking place 
as hardened hearts are softened to the love of God and the love of others. We can rejoice in the salvation, the saving power of Christ that breaks through the walls of sin and death and evil. We can live with the expectancy that as the Holy Spirit directs us, we will be vessels through which God's saving message comes to others. As we live with expectancy, assured that God is at work in our world in so many ways, we can live each day like Simeon and Anna, praising God for coming to live among us. Yes, people such as us, bringing light to the dark places of the world. Amen.